what next week's about. Uh, then we're just gonna hear from the, the more and uh, just be excited with them. Celebrate their faithful following and being obedient to God. And uh, I want to finish with uh, just how God provides. How God provides. Uh, this man, uh, Mike, Michael, Mike Ivy, he is actually tall. He can actually play uh, college bas basketball uh, back in the States. So he, he's from Texas, uh, but he's in the UK. So he has a very weird accent going on. But Mike, and uh, so Mike is off Freya's dad. Mike is Freya's dad. Uh, so Mike became a pastor uh, during COVID times, an associate pastor in this church. And his senior pastor was only uh, 40 something years old. So he was just kind of learning how to pastor a church under his senior pastor. Uh, but then, um, the senior pastor unfortunately passed away due to a heart attack. So all of a sudden, and uh, Mike is, I actually don't know how old Mike is, but Mike is younger than me and in his 30s, so 30 to 35. So he and his wife, with two ch young children, suddenly became the senior pastor of that church. With no enough training and equipment to, to be in that space. And they do not have a leadership to help and support them because of COVID time. And it was a huge struggle because there's still people, older people in the church wondering if, if they can do it, if they're suitable, and not really supporting them. So they're really, really struggling. They're feeling really hard on the inside. But they try, they still do their best. They're trying to be faithful to God. So when Craig, um, when we're, before we left, Craig connected up with, uh, with Mike. And um, Craig just asked Mike, is there a Craig said, I keep saying October 15th circle. So he asked Mike, is there some significance to what October 15th means? So Mike said, to him, October 15th always means the start of a new season. Because that's how their college basketball work. October 15th is the start of a new season. And they would actually always circle it in their, in their uh, program. So, so October 15th was on their mind, so we went there. We, we, land, uh, we landed on the 19th when we did the night where we released the words and all that. And uh, one of the words I released over the whole church is that, um, you know, there's a, there's a heritage and there's a, of God for this church to unlock. There's a treasure inside. And also that uh, breakthrough was coming when I was um, worshiping. I really felt um, this very bright orange light kind of seeing that and Craig said orange generally means breakthrough. I said like, okay, so I kind of just had that in mind for the church and released for them. Um, on October 24th, so about five days later after we arrived in the UK, we were in a uh, prayer night, prayer, uh, just a prayer meeting with their church. One of the brothers said um, something like they saw, he saw the clock turning eight o'clock before he was praying for Michael. Uh, so it's just turning 8 o'clock. So in, in their church, they're more charismatic and Pentecostal. So 8 signifies a new beginning, something new. Uh, so he said, so he prayed for Mike that you're entering into a new season. Uh, there's a new beginning happening, like something new is going to happen. Uh, without knowing uh, the October 15th, so the church doesn't know the October 15th, it's just all in Michael's heart. But we're just keep releasing over it. On, on, on the next day after the prayer meeting, uh, it was so poetic and symbolic. We're walking there on this old, of, like, government building. Uh, there was like this UK flag. And we're just looking at it. And, and Mike got an email saying that his uh, citizenship in the UK has been approved. So there's just this newness that keep, keep popping up. So we sat down in the cafe, and uh, Mike was just telling us actually from October 15th, the first couple. Uh, came to and said, we want to be part of your leadership team. On October 19th, uh, when we had the encounter night, the Indian couple that I prayed for uh, afterwards came, went to Mike and said, we want to be part of the leadership team and support you. And right after service on uh, October 23rd, another couple approached Mike to say, we want to be part of the leadership team and support you and lead the church together. And the ones that had been causing uh, trouble <laughs> in the stands uh, for them, causing uh, just grief for them, had just had this complete change in how they approach uh, Mike and um, Katie, his wife. So there's this leadership shift that was going on. There's this fresh new start that was going on. And 
he messaged us uh, the next Sunday after we had left that you could just sense the whole congregation was different. And he just said, you know, God just really provided what Mike and, uh, and Katie needed just to different people onto the same exact thing that they needed without people knowing what they needed. And God would do all that just to encourage them. But that requires people obedient in sharing, speaking, encouraging the word of God to one another. And we will always be learning. So I just want to encourage you. But sometimes it's, and I mean, if doors have been, if you want to add something in later, uh, feel, feel free to, say feel free to. But sometimes it just starts with you saying, God, what is it that you want me to share? that will show people your love. Who do you want me to share it with? And just, just trust that, you know, like the Holy Spirit is in you. He's not there to deceive you. And um, and sometimes you'll learn, you'll learn to differentiate what comes from you, what comes from the Holy Spirit. That takes time learning. And maybe you'll get a person's name, and maybe you'll get something. And then just bring it to God and say, God, what are you trying to say through what you have shown me to the person? And then just go to the person just say, hey, this might look seem odd, but I was praying for you. This is what I got. And if it doesn't make sense, just forget it. But if it does, I hope it will encourage you and bless you. This is what I received. And then you can have a little dialogue. Just like, was that, does that make any sense? Um, what is it that you're going through that makes sense? And just teeth it out a little bit. And then just pray for them after you have that conversation. And do that more and more. Just train that hearing from God and blessing people and sharing the love of God wherever we go. So that's kind of how I do it. I don't know if there's anything you guys yeah. and, uh, and that's where I'm going to finish as well. So I'll let Ben uh, do some more. Just, just a few minutes of your time and might just use as a summary. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the journey of just sharing you know, um, what we feel God's saying is one that's quite tenuous. I remember my sister was really keen on this, and when I lived in Auckland, I kind of didn't want to hang out with her in malls because she would end up just like giving people words and or just disappearing when I put her in a shopping cart and I can't be on stuff, she'd just be gone. <laughs> but I, I think one thing that sort of crystallized the value of just sharing, you know, what's on your heart is that I remember we went to CBD and I was just catching up with her with tea and yeah, you Auckland know, CBD. On, on an evening, it's pretty sort of godless in a sense, you know, it's just stuff happening, you know, the, I had all the few beers and then the wait, waitress came along and my sister said, she had like, kind of like, what she felt God was saying to the waitress, like, you know, just encouraging her. And I remember the waitress just sort of saying, you know, thank you so much for sharing that. My, my brother just passed away a few days ago and that word means a lot to me. And I just kind of just relate to the fact that sometimes what we're doing is not about us because we're actually showing the world that God is, that they're on God's mind. But at the same time, I think it is for us because ultimately the tension and the fear we experience when sharing our faith actually comes from our unbelief in God, and our unbelief that God could be good and that he actually holds our world in our hands. I think many times our hearts are fractured because of the difficulties we have faced in our days, the disappointments, the brokenness. And so when we share our faith and we go out there and we say, oh, we think God's saying this, it's two, two sides of the same coin. On one hand, it's for the people we're reaching out to, but at the same time, it's a reflection to our own heart that despite the difficulties, and disappointments, we're saying, God, we trust you, and we believe you've got our backs. And so I think that's what Ellen is sharing about, is that we want the world to know that God loves them, but ultimately it's fueled by obedience, because we trust in his lordship and in his goodness. And ultimately the journey of Christianity is one where we're actually walking into the Father's heart, we're actually getting to know him deeper. I really like that verse that Evan shared, Proverbs 16, 19. Um, 
the email team says, we can make our plans, but God determines our path. And you know, it's like, um, I've been with him count about 10 years now. I think we had our plans, but I think God is directing our paths. And I think God directing our paths is way we should in our plans. So I just um, want to summarize Ellen's message, just encouraging us to get out there. Not for others, but maybe actually for ourselves. The second thing is um, the rhythms, and I think the picture I got was of the sine wave. You know, like for those who do calculus, it's that wave that goes up and down. And, and I think many of us, we always treat, if we imagine the y-axis, if it's above zero, it's you drawing from God, under zero, you're drawing from yourself. I think we always want to ramp it up, but I think there's importance of rhythms that we're drawing from God so that we can give out, so that we've got those rhythms as well. So if you didn't have anything else to say, I'll just say a prayer. Yeah, would you close it? Thank you, God, that um, each of our journeys you know, each of our life story is your narrative. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing in Ellen's life. And we thank you for what you share through vacancy on next week. And we once again just give ourselves to you, and we submit ourselves to you. And we pray that you have your way in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome, guys. Um, thank you, preacher. Preacher man. Cool. Okay. Have a good day, guys.